really want to talk about the NAC plus Rifaximin study you did because myself and my group had quite a bit of experience with it and we didn't find it to be very successful. So let me just give you the background here. Um, we were coming at it from a little bit of a different way. We were thinking about re uh, relapse. We were thinking about recurrence. And, you know, one of the first things, you know, anybody would think about with a chronic relapsing, you know, bacterial condition is biofilm. You know, is it a biofilm infection? And um, so we thought, look, if we give antibiofilm remedies, uh, which NAC, so NAC has been used with H. pylori, just for anyone listening, um, as an antibiofilm adjunctive therapy um, to treat that. So we looked at that and we thought, let look, why don't we give antibiofilm and let's see if it affects relapse. So for about two years, we used NAC and then we used um, enzyme-based uh, antibiofilms as well as with EDTA. And we also didn't give it to everybody. This wasn't an official study. So this is just, you know, clinical observation, which can, there can be misperceptions. And we couldn't see any difference. Um, so after about two years of using all of these different antibiofilms, we abandoned it because we just thought, look, we're not seeing any help. We weren't really looking to see, is it making our treatment go better? Um, we might've missed that in our, in our perception. Um, the dose, I wonder, could it be a dose thing? We gave just this doses that were given for H. pylori, you know, 600 to 1200. Some of those studies use it a week or two ahead. And then during, we did that, we did it during. But what I heard you say is that you have a special delivery system in your lecture, you said. Could this be the difference? I don't know. Anything so, you want um, to tell us? One of the unique things about N acetylcysteine is that, um, when you put it on mucus, saliva, for example, or the stomach is, if you're, if you've ever vomited, you know, the stringy stuff you get at the end, which is kind of gross, but that's mucus, right? And acetylcysteine breaks that up. The stomach is full of mucus. If you just pop a pill of an acetylcysteine, that N acetylcysteine will be used up by the amount of mucus that's just in your stomach. So you got to get it to where it needs to get to. Uh, and you can't let it just pop open in the stomach and then it gets all used up. So there we go. it has to be, yeah. So it's got to be delivered to where we want the refaxment to work. And you know where that is, uh, hence the term SIBO, uh, <laughs> small intestine, um, but in a particular way. So it's not just there, but in a particular way that it's delivered. We'll see. I mean, the trial has to work. I mean, if it doesn't work, then the delivery system wasn't, wasn't good, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's the problem. 